Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. You may notice that I am in a different location than usual. This is my home recording area because I am off pretty much for the summer. So I'm excited to get started to talk to you guys about a topic that was just requested by a viewer, and that is about approach chart minima and NOTAMs and how they affect our approach chart minima. So you can, of course, go to the FAA NOTAM search. Uh, you can find this, and I'll link to it in the video description. But I pulled up some NOTAMs for Kansas City International Airport. And we are going to be looking at a related Jefferson chart, the ILS or localizer to runway one right at Kansas City, specifically this part of the chart, the minimum section. Now, if you take a look at the minimum section for Jefferson, this is what it looks like. That's what this video is going to focus on. If you want a totally different uh, interpretation of this chart minima section, I've got another overview video specific to FAA charts that you can check out. But for this purposes, we're going to focus on Jefferson because that's what pretty much every airline in the United States is presently using. Okay, and so when we look at this section, there's a bunch of boxes on here that apply to various NOTAMs. So first of all, let's look at a couple NOTAMs. I pulled these out of the FAA NOTAM search when I recorded this. I did make a little bit of changes to that just for the fun of it, just so we can think about it as dispatchers. So that first NOTAM on there, let's talk about how to read it. So we have Kansas City. It is from April, and it is the 103rd NOTAM for the month of April for Kansas City relating to runways, and it is one right and one nine left is closed. Okay, and then we have the date, and I have a whole nother video about reading NOTAMs, so you can check that out, but I would read this as April the 23rd of 2025, starting at 2230 through December 30 of 2025 at 2300 UTC, and all times that NOTAMs are given in UTC. Okay, so like I just said, this is a NOTAM, and oh look, my approach goes to runway one right. What should I do? Okay, as a dispatcher, I should not be dispatching this flight with this specific approach for this specific runway because it's a closed runway. So that's a, that's a problem. Okay, so this first NOTAM is basically a no-go situation. The next part of it, this is a NOTAM I actually uh, found today for Kansas City, except for it was for a different runway, but it is also, very similar as far as being a no-go for me as a dispatcher or a pilot because it says that the ILS to this runway, U.S. means unserviceable, so it's not working. And then we could check the dates, but if you check the dates, you will see that it does apply uh, presently because I'm recording this in June 2025. Okay, so... These would be like a no-go note, but that's not what I was asked to record about. So let's talk about this one. I, I made a new notum. Okay, so again, we can practice reading it. It's June, and it's the 25th notum of the month for Kansas City, and is a runway notum. The center line lights for runway one right are not working, unserviceable, starting on June third of this year at 1200 UTC and they are going to be continued not working until June ooh, that was Laura's typo June 30 uh 2025 there's only 30 days in June huh, uh, at 2300 okay so what does that do to me what does that do to me as a pilot as a dispatcher all right so with the center line lights out of service if this were the only notum that I had related to this runway then I could still fly the ILS but I would be limited to the touchdown zone center line lights being out of service. Okay, so it does not change my decision altitude at all. It's still 1217 feet MSL, but it does move up my visibility requirement to RVR of 2400 or half a mile. Now, one other thing I want to point out. If everything were working, we could be using RVR of 1800. But you do notice this one, and um, this, just note, if you're going to do an interview, airlines seem to like to ask about notes. I think it's good for people to know how to read notes. So the one goes to this little note down here saying, 
that RVR of 1800, even with the center line lights not working, even with touchdown zone lights not working, your air carrier could still use, if authorized, RVR 1800 if they have appropriate flight director or autopilot or heads up display and they're using it all the way to the DA. Okay, cool. All right. So that was a pretty easy notum. Didn't really do a whole lot to my, uh, to my minimum, but let's take a look at another one. All right. This one, I have pulled this one. This is a lot longer notum. Okay, this is a FDC notum or a flight data center notum. Um, and I, to be totally honest, am not 100% certain of the numbering system that they use for FDCs. If anybody knows, I would love to know more. You can comment, and I'm sure some smart viewer is going to comment hopefully soon about this numbering system. But it is for Kansas City, and it's related to an instrument approach into Kansas City International. Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, cool. So that's basically my header part of the notum. So then we have, it's for the ILS or localizer runway one right, amendment 7A. Okay, so when you look at the side of a Jefferson chart, let's go back to the overview of the Jefferson chart. In the corner right there, you will see the current amendment status of that approach chart. So you would have to check to see if this one applied to the version that you're looking at. Okay. So assuming it does apply, let's let's keep going. All right, so what this says is that on the straight in ILS to runway one right, the decision altitude, so that would be up here, has been increased to 1,275 feet. Aha, MSL, height above touchdown is now 261 feet AGL. So instead of 200 foot above ground level, it's 261. And this applies to all cats. Okay, now we're not talking about felines or anything like that here. We're talking about the category for flying an approach. So there's your categories A, B, C, D. If you ever forget, Jefferson's got you covered. Yay, love Jefferson. So here is all my maximum speeds for the categories printed right on every Jefferson chart. Yay, Jefferson. Don't change that. Okay, keep it there. All right, so what is that saying? That is saying that my decision altitude is now, and I could even write it on my chart, 1275, sorry for my chicken scratchings, and that is my new decision altitude. Okay, also, now the visibility has to be RVR 2000 feet for all caps, so I would have to go up to an RVR of 2000. Half a mile would stay the same, um, yeah. Uh, because we don't have anything changing for my half mile. Okay, and then it says, another piece of the notum, for an inoperative approach light system, ALS for approach light system, note Jefferson uses the same thing here, we have to increase the straight in ILS, all categories, so A, B, C, D, again, visibility to RVR 4500. Mm, okay, so now this goes to RVR 4500. Okay, so that would be what this part of the nota means. And then, okay, let's erase uh, part of this. All right, we also have if, let's say, my glide slope were not working, then I would be using the straight in localizer only. So I'd be over on this side of my chart to run one ray one right. Then they are saying the category E visibility would go up to five thousand RVR. Okay, so basically they're saying you would have an extra box here if your aircraft is very fast. Jefferson doesn't list it, but it's basically anything over 165. That makes my RVR 5,000 feet. Cool. Okay, wow. That was a lot of stuff that I had to monkey around with on my chart to increase everything. And why? Why is this going on? Okay, so the next part of the notum tells me why. Well, they have put up a temporary crane. Okay, and here's its location. Here's how tall it is. It's 1,069 feet tall. MSL is 1,426 feet southwest, runway one right. Okay, um, now I did understand this part. I had to look this up in a notum list. That's the central region of the United States. And to be totally honest, again, I need a smart viewer because I looked through multiple FAA publications trying to figure out what this entire numbering system means. 
I don't really know what NRA stands for related to NOTAMs. Yeah, uh, I would love to know more about that. There's also a second temporary crane with all the information, same stuff. And I'm not going to read these dates because we just did that in the previous part of this video, other than to say if you see EST at the end, that means it is estimated. Okay, it means that they do not know when they're going to be done with their crane. And so this notum is going to hang around until the crane and other crane is put away and is no longer an obstacle. Cool. Okay. All right. How about this note? All right. I made it easier for you. Yay. Okay. So uh, here we've got a navigation notum that says my glide slope for runway one right is not working. Okay. So if the glide slope is not working, then I cannot fly an ILS. So I can essentially not do this, but I would be confined to this part of the chart, which lets me use this as a localizer only approach. And I now have an MDA of 1,360 feet MSL instead of a DA. And I have some other videos about that if you would like to check it out. But uh, this makes it a non-precision approach. And then I would just use all the information in these two boxes here to figure out my minimums. And as long as everything else is working, here is my visibility minimums if the glide slope for that runway is not working. Okay, what if we had this type of notum? All right, here we have a runway notum, also a Kansas City, that says my approach lights are not working. Okay, so if my approach lights are not working on runway one right, then I will have to use this box here. If everything else is working, I would use the same DA. That does not change. It's still 1217. We're going to pretend that other notum went away. I'm doing one notum at a time here because it's could be crazy otherwise. But my new visibility requirement for all the categories is RVR 4,000 or three quarters of a mile visibility. Cool. But, all right, what if I added this notum into the mix? So now we have two notums and they both are combining here. So number one, the approach light system still is not working, but now I've put back that glide slope not working either. So I can't use this part of the chart Okay, so now instead, I am using my glide slope minimums. I'm back to using the MDA of 1,360, but also my approach lights are out of service. So that means that if I were category A or B, I would have RVR requirement of 5,000 feet or one mile. If I were category C or D or E, I would be RVR of 5,500 feet or one statute mile required visibility. Cool. So that would bump us up basically into the highest possible category. All right. There's one part of the chart we didn't talk about yet, and that is the circle to land minimum. So of course, I could not leave you guys without a circle to land minimum notum. So here we go. Okay. This one. Okay. I promise I did not doctor this one in any way. I just actually took it out of their website. Uh, this morning off the FAA notum search. So here we go. Here is another FDC flight data center notum that applies to instrument approaches at Kansas City. And look at that. It has to do with construction stuff. Again, this is an uh, interesting notum because notice it applies to a lot of different approaches, one of which is the one that we have been focusing on here, the ILS or localizer to runway one right. So this says what the circling minimum descent altitude, okay, is now going to be 1640. And that is 613 feet AGL for all the categories. Okay, so then essentially my circling minimum, I'll try to write a six over top of that, goes up to 1640. And that increases category D also to 1640. In real life, I would write a little better with that, okay? And then it says, okay, for category C, we have to go up to not one and a half, but one and three quarters. And category E now, which is not shown on here, is a new one, and we have two and a quarter miles visibility required, okay? So it ups my circling minimum descent altitude, it ups my visibility required for circle to land. If you don't know what circle to land is, 
I'll put a link in the video description. I've got a video about circling where you can watch me and a student do a circle to land procedure. Uh, but it's because of some more temporary construction stuff that is sitting a close, relatively close, 1.2 miles east of the airport. Um, once again, this is the central region, but I, I still cannot figure out what this is. Um, I'm kind of thinking it is maybe a NOTAM publication organization system. Uh, again, I need somebody to comment, so please help me out. Check it out, check that out and put in the comments what that really means. Okay, and then we have the dates again, and this one apparently is an estimate on when they think it's going to be done. They think it's going to be done November 3 of 2025 at 1900 UTC, estimated. Okay, so the, the document that I looked at for some of the help, I uh, got some information out of 7930.2 FAA document, and the appendices have some various examples of notums. I'll put a link in the video description to the FAA's publication. And then I also found a somewhat helpful, but totally unofficial list on the internet, which you might find helpful, uh, but even it did not have this NRA abbreviation. It did have the ACE one. So yeah, check it out. I'd love to know what you guys think. What else have you seen crazy on notums and how it affects minimums? So thank you for watching Aviation 101 with Laura, and I hope you have a great day.